Last year, not only was I extremely happy with many of the releases I played, but I think part of my enjoyment might have also been thanks to how I played them. Having reviewed games for a bit now, since I started JRPG Jungle as a blog in 2014, I got more used to playing through games quicker than I should have, and it was only after playing Yakuza Like a Dragon at the end of 2020 at the beginning of 2021 with its set difficulty that forced me to reevaluate the way I was playing things, and many of the changes I've made since then I think has shaped my JRPG time for the better. While I don't necessarily recommend overthinking your gaming time as much as I have, a little bit of thought can sometimes make this fun time even better. So to give you some ideas of how my gaming time has changed and things that could maybe improve yours too, here are the gameplay habits I've been sticking to since last year and hope to keep doing this year. One of my worst habits with video games was the main one I mentioned in the intro that was trying to get through them too quickly, a habit I truly broke last year and won't be coming back to. While I meant my reviews were generally a little later last year, unless I got a game early, while it seems so incredibly obvious now, playing a game more deeply means my time and experiences with games were better and deeper than ever last year. But as someone who's trying to play and cover as many games as possible, it's important for me to remember that that might be nice, but so is spending more time playing through quests and side moments like if I wasn't making a review, and it's honestly just been liberating to allow myself to put time into smaller parts of a game until I get bored of them and then move on to the main story naturally. And whether you're in the same boat I put myself or you're someone who tries to keep up with current releases, I think it's good to remember sometimes that games are full of many small things that are worth stopping and paying attention to that can sometimes make the experience even better. It's been really fun to allow myself to really explore features I like, get addicted to mini games, and to have my experiences with games not thought of as things I'm playing for review anymore, and just be games I'm playing for fun like it would be if I didn't have a channel. Which also means not playing with features I don't like as much, that means I get to have every experience with a game go exactly how I want it to, unless there's a hiccup in the game itself, that means I can actually talk about it and make my reviews better for it too. It's a simple habit, but I think it's one worth being reminded of sometimes, and it's good to remember that at the end of the day, it's about having a fun or meaningful experience with these games no matter how you choose to play. I'm always pleasantly surprised that the video I made years ago about playing on easy mode did so well, and it's also always an interesting video to represent my stance on gameplay difficulties, as my stance has changed just a little since then. To echo the main point I wanted to make with that video, I still absolutely think you should play whatever difficulty you feel suits you. If you feel like a challenge, feel free to enjoy hard mode, and if you want to fly through things quickly because you don't have a lot of time or you want a lighter experience, easy mode is still great for that, and I would never judge anyone positively or negatively based on what difficulty they play, as at the end of the day, it's just a personal preference. But for me, it became apparent that I was often playing on easy mode not just for the difficulty, but often just for the time-saving benefits, and also when it came to making reviews, I never felt like I could truly talk about difficulty, and I wanted to be able to say whatever I want in my reviews. That ultimately pushed me to make the change to playing on normal for all of my reviews in 2021, and I plan to keep this going this year. I also think I had a small insecurity on whether or not I was capable of playing on normal, and it was thanks to Yakuza Like a Dragon, which will come up a lot in this video, that I realized I could as you can't go down in difficulty in that game. And while I had to run around the map and find ways to level up when I got hit by its jumps in difficulty, it's also thanks to this I saw a bunch of wacky side stories that are one of the many reasons why I ended up loving it enough to make it one of my favorite games from 2020. And I've had this effect continue into other games I played last year, such as Tales of Arise, as it forced me to discover more quests and things to do in its world that I think made playing through the world richer than I think would have been without. So normal mode has been how I've been playing games for review since Yakuza Like a Dragon, and is overall something I think has enriched my gaming life and I have no plans of changing. It's also worth noting that when I'm not reviewing games, I also play other difficulties and pretty much do whatever I like. With for example my time with World Ends Club demo being on easy mode because despite the fact I could play in on normal, due to everything else in my life, I only played about an hour of it a month and in fact only just finished it in December, so it is good to know that I can save time with easy mode and have a more pleasant experience if I'd like. And this kind of flexibility in my free time is something I appreciate doing too. Another difficulty change I made last year was that in my time replaying Atelier Ryza, I finally accepted the fact that I just wasn't enjoying its legendary mode and think if I ever play that game again, I'll probably play it on normal to see how it feels as I probably played it on easy mode my first time round and I enjoyed playing Ryza 2 that way, but in my 
might also be worth noting that I'm playing Blue Reflection Second Light on its more harder difficulties, but flicking back and forth between the hardest and second hardest difficulty when I run out of quests to do when I go back in the school. So as I said, for me, it's more about being flexible with changing this difficulty rather than just sticking to easy mode. No matter how or why you're playing games, I think it's good to consider your preferences and how much you're enjoying something, and if upping or lowering the difficulty could make something more enjoyable, I say go for it. Whether you're playing normal, hard, and everything above, below, and in between, it's important to play what gives you the most enjoyment and the best overall experience. My time with Yakuza Like a Dragon was one of the first times in years I took a break while playing a game, and while it only lasted for a few days, the amount of renewed enthusiasm and excitement I came back with the next time I played made me realize that taking breaks while playing games was possible and it wouldn't make me forget the entire story and may even be best in certain situations. I nearly did this again with another game I played last year, which was Atelier Lydian Soul DX, when I felt myself starting to feel burnout while playing it since I'd played the two games before it back to back. I ultimately kept playing as I knew how close I was to finishing thanks to it basically being my second playthrough, but knowing it's an option has been good for allowing me to really think about if I'm happy to keep playing an experience or not, and has been a good measure to let me know how much I'm into a game as if I'm not, I know I can put things down and come back to them the next time I'm ready. For anyone who tries to or is sticking to one game at a time, I absolutely recommend giving a break a try the next time you feel yourself getting burnout with an experience cause it just happens, especially while playing some of the longer JRPGs. I'm glad to have this be an option I consider these days, as even if I don't use it that much, it helps me stay into the games because I want to, not because I feel like I have to. Speaking of keeping into games, something that has helped my immersion in them has been that I've pretty much completely switched over to using the Japanese voice option whenever it's available, and while everything on this list is a personal preference at the end of the day, I'd like to emphasize that I'm not telling anyone to switch from dubs to subs or anything like that, but for me, it's been a change that I've been glad to have made. Before last year, and pretty much all my life, I was a person who always consumed Japanese media with English dubs whenever possible, and I'm still a big supporter of having dubs be an option as much as possible as I know they help titles be more immersive and enjoyable for those who enjoy them. For me last year though, I decided to give Japanese voiceovers a try to try and solve the problem of many English voice casts reminding me of their characters in other games, with the biggest example of this being that I associate pretty much all the voice actors from Persona 5 with those characters. So by switching to Japanese, I've been able to break that association, which means I've been able to experience characters without any preconceived notion of what they'll be like that has made me feel like I've been able to enjoy certain characters more. When originally writing this first draft of this script in August, I thought this would be a temporary habit, but I've actually found I don't want to switch back at all just yet too. While I still have English speaking voice actors I like, like Robbie Damon and Ray Chase, even knowing that these actors have been in games I played last year gave me no desire to switch back, and I'm still genuinely enjoying discovering characters from a fresh perspective, as there are so many voice actors in Japan that I don't know, and there are also a bunch I've come to like, like Hina Kino and Reina Ueda, and I find especially with the latter, I don't realize I'm hearing her until much later in a game that is really good for immersion, and that keeps me using Japanese doves as much as possible since I don't want to be thinking about the act of voicing the character, but rather what the character is saying. As an added bonus, it is also some unintentional Japanese listening practice since I want to learn the language, which isn't the reason why I'm doing it, but it does help seal the deal for this being how I like to currently consume JRPGs at the moment. I'd be curious to hear if anyone else has switched either way in the comments as I'm surprised at how much I think it's improved in me liking a lot of characters last year, whether it was in Scarlet Nexus, Seven Nights, or the many Atelier games I played. And if you're finding you keep calling characters by different names in your head based on who their voice actor played in the past too, this could be something worth trying no matter what language you're switching to. As the last habit I developed last year that somehow manages to relate back to Yakuza Like a Dragon, I found myself not wanting to consume everything, which has two meanings for me. In terms of time, I realistically don't have time to play every single release, which means last year I missed some pretty noteworthy ones, such as Near Replicant's release and Shin Megami Tensei 5, and I'm sure there will be plenty of other titles I'll unfortunately miss this year too because there's only so much time, but I don't mind how it makes me more mindful when I choose the main thing I'm going to play each month 
and I've become more open to jumping into games for just an hour or so if I buy or receive multiple, picking one and then saving the rest for when I get time, which is the reason I was able to review games such as Fuga Melodies of Steel and Voice of Cards last year because I came back to them when I was ready. The second meaning, and the main one I'm referring to in this section though, is that once I've decided I want to play a game, I've been trying to go dark on things whenever I can, which means trying not to watch full trailers, not clicking on every single article about games I'm excited for, spoiling less features, and letting the actual finished game speak more for itself than all the hype in between. When I think of how this habit was beneficial, I can't help but think back to my experience with Tales of Arise because from its very first trailer, I already knew it looked beautiful and like something I absolutely wanted to play, so I didn't feel the need to read every little thing about it, and really enjoyed discovering features like cooking or fishing in the demo that I only played because of the bonuses, and had fun playing with them for the first time, especially because I had no idea what they'd be like. Even for games I'm super excited for, like Atelia Sophie 2, I'm actively trying not to look at anything else about it since its first trailer because I already know I want it, so unless I end up needing footage for a video or something, I'll continue to try avoiding it so I can enjoy it the most when it comes out. This idea was also solidified for me when I looked back on Yakuza Like a Dragon's 11 minute long Japanese trailer after finishing that spoiled so many plot points that I'm glad I'd forgotten about by the time I played, and I loved getting certain party members in the game that I didn't realize were going to join, so I'd like to have this kind of experience in as many games as possible as it was a lot of fun, and let me discover things naturally and be surprised at all the right moments. It's thanks to this though as I was finishing Scarlet Nexus when making this script, I felt happier than ever getting to know its characters through their bond events all fresh rather than seeing their character trailers, and while I still love a good trailer such as Atlas's PVs that I think show just the right amount of each game they show, I also really like this idea of letting games speak for themselves, and will try to stick to it as much as possible as I keep playing games throughout this year. It's with habits like this, I'm happy to say that my gaming time is more thoughtful than ever, and I wonder what game like Yakuza Like a Dragon will shake up my gaming time in future and add or change these habits someday. For now though, I'll keep using them whenever I feel like I can make an experience better by doing them, and I hope this was interesting or that it helps you guys think about how you can make your JRPG playtime the best it can possibly be. Thank you for watching this video, let me know in the comments below if you've made any changes to your gaming habits recently, or if you have anything special you want to do with your gaming time this year. You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here, and you can find me on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at JRPG Jungle. Links to those will be in the description below. Happy New Year, and until next time, thank you, bye!